to the cackling nincompoop who is a heartbeat away <laughs> from the presidency, the comprehensively incapable Kamala Harris. Her wretched performance this week has cemented her place as the worst vice president in US history. And my word, they've had a few doozies, including one who shot founding father Alexandra Hamilton. Dead? Yeah, you shot him dead. And another one who couldn't even spell potato. But you know what? Dan Quayle is a genius when compared to Kamala. After a cringeworthy performance in recent weeks, she had the opportunity to redeem herself during a vitally important trip to Poland and Romania as Russia's invasion of Ukraine plunges the region into a deepening crisis. The wise White House said her visit will demonstrate the strength and unity of the NATO alliance. What it actually did was demonstrate the utter ineptitude of the vice president. <laughs> Okay, so this time. Szanowna pani redaktor. You might be wondering what prompted that mad cackling during such a serious press conference. Was there perhaps a moment of lightness during such a dark time? Well, no. That embarrassing performance was prompted by a serious question about the unfolding refugee crisis. Is the United States willing to make a specific allocation? for Ukrainian refugees. And for President Duda, I wanted to know if you think, and if you asked the United States to specifically accept more refugees. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a friend in need is a friend indeed. <laughs> okay, I, I, I can first. <laughs> okay, so this time. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we laughing? Why? Why? It's a little wonder that Ukrainian President, President Zelensky's former press secretary said this of Kamala after that chuckle-happy performance with a Polish president. It would be a tragedy <laughs> if this woman won the presidency. Never mind winning it, the fear is she'll be installed president during Biden's first term should the 79-year-old's health decline further. But put the mad chuckling to one side. Kamala Harris's incompetence and complete lack of foreign policy acumen was on display every time she actually answered a question. We all watched the television coverage of just yesterday. That's on top of everything else that we know and don't know yet based on what we've just been able to see. And because we've seen it or not doesn't mean it hasn't happened but just limited to what we have seen. <laughs> it's, it's not it's, funny. It's tragic. <laughs> and it only got worse. I am here, standing here on the northern flank, on the eastern flank, talking about what we have in terms of the eastern flank and our NATO allies, and what is at stake at this very moment. What is at stake this very moment? are some of the guiding principles around the NATO alliance. Given that train wreck performance, you can see why Kamala tried to handball a question about historic inflation in America to the Romanian president. Watch this carefully. If I can ask you, Madam Vice President, President Biden has said that Americans will feel some pain for the sake of defending freedom and liberty, but there does seem to be no end game in sight. How long should Americans expect, how long should we be bracing for um, this really sort of um, historic inflation and some unprecedented gas prices? Sure. Uh, oh, no, me? Oh, 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 you. My yeah. turn? Oh, oh, OK. It's yours, yeah. Hopeless, hopeless. <laughs> and I won't make you listen to her try and fail to answer that rather obvious question. And I won't go into all the ways she's failed to have any impact on the illegal immigration disaster the US is experiencing after being put in charge of the border crisis. I'll just end by saying Kamala Harris is proof of what can happen when you disregard meritocracy and embrace identity politics. Kamala is what happens when you choose people for key roles, not according to their ability, experience or acumen, but according to their gender or their skin colour. Good luck, America.